Hey everyone, welcome back to GM Details. Now I've got something here for all you electric car driving, lentil eating eco warriors. Three eco friendly products from Fluorescent. Now I'm sure there's more than one or two of you who are interested in a more environmentally friendly approach to your chemicals that you use. So this video should be of interest to you. We're going to try these three different products, put them through their paces and see how we get on. Let's get into it. So first up we'll give the car a snow foam, rinse down and we'll take it from there. Let's start with the shampoo, it is called Pure. It's a wash and wax shampoo and we're more used to pure shampoos being called pure without the wax in them so this is really quite confusing. But you've got to remember that this is an eco-friendly shampoo so with it being phosphate free, free of VOCs which are volatile organic compounds. But I'm not here to give you a chemistry lesson on these type of things if you want to know any more information on these chemicals and the uses and stuff like that, Google it yourself or I'll leave a link to Verisense website for you to check out. So for today's wash I'm using the microfiber noodle wash pad that I got from Because Race Car Box. Don't know if you remember back a few months ago when we did that unboxing then this was in that kit. Now there's not a great deal of suds coming from the shampoo at its maximum dilution. If you want a bit more suds, add a wee bit more shampoo. But the slickness of it is sublime and it allows the wash mitt to easily glide across the panels. And as it's a nice warm day with the sun on the side of the car, I'm just going to rinse it down before moving on to do the rest of the car. Now the scent for the shampoo is classic apple scent and it really does come through in the wash. It's a really nice scented shampoo. Even at 1200 to 1 you're only using 15 millilitres of the shampoo in the wash bucket. But you do get that really nice lovely smell of apples as you're using your mitt. So the only small negative to this product is that it claims to leave some sort of protection behind. I've never really noticed any protection with any wash and wax shampoo that I've ever used in my life. So it's not really a negative, it's just that something has never really been there but it does claim that and I've not seen any evidence of it. But it does rinse away quickly and easily. Overall quite a nice shampoo to use, not my favourite, I don't really like wash and wax shampoos but I like the slickness of it and I like the smell of it and it's biodegradable too and with it being a little bit kinder to your skin you'll be able to sleep that little bit better in your bed just knowing that you've done that little bit more for the environment. And above all, doesn't do a bad job cleaning up your car either. So I've been rather neglectful of my own car's wheels, uh, it's been weeks, maybe even months it's been since these were cleaned and they're absolutely disgusting, caked in brake dust. Now I'm going to be honest with you, these wheels are ceramic coated with KKD Revolve, which actually by some sort of weird coincidence, that the cleaner that we're going to use is called Revolve. Now to give the product its 100% justice, all I have really in that bucket is just clean fresh water and EZ brush just to agitate the cleaner within the barrels and between the spokes. But first of all we'll give it a contactless clean just to see how it reacts with the dirt and dust on a 50-50. I've just counted how many sprays I've applied to this half of the wheel and it was around about 54 which is going some isn't it? <laughs> it just got a little bit carried away. So between the barrels, the spokes and the tyres I've used roughly about 70 millilitres of product. Way too much. So we'll let it dwell and do its thing for a few minutes just while we get the Karcher K5 ready and we'll give it a pressure rinse down. Let's have a look at the tyres and see how they're doing. You can see they're already that we're getting a bit of browning. Now that's without agitation so obviously the cleaner is very powerful reaching into that rubber and extracting out this 
browning from this so far. I don't want it to negatively affect my garage therapy tyre serum. And then it starts raining. Now during the rain I gave it a pressure rinse off, didn't film it because it was raining. Now the right hand side is just pressure rinse alone. Now even although they've been ceramic coated, they still have that coating of brake dust which won't come off just with rinsing alone. But you can see here just with a contactless wash, it's actually cleaned the surface of the metal layer really quite well. Clearly I haven't learned from my previous over application and I've put even more on this time between the tyres and the spokes. So there's over a hundred more mils being put in this. Gradually running out of the product, there's only 500 in the bottle and I've already used 170 mils on one wheel. So if I don't watch what I'm doing, I'm going to run out before the end of the fourth wheel here. Now you'll have all seen this before, this is the EZ small detailing brush. Quite soft nylon fibres which glide easily between these spokes is very very nice and with the lubricating foam coming from the wheel cleaner it's doing minimal damage to these wheels. These, although they're diamond cut faced wheels, they really do have a good level of clear coat on them and I really have no qualms about using the brush on these wheels whatsoever. Now my method for using these is not only the forward and backward motion but the spinny twirly motion too so you're really getting the best of all cleaning actions from the brush. And if you have spokes like these and you want to use one of these brushes just imagine you're brushing your teeth it's much the same way. Just keep changing the angle just so you can try and get a little bit of behind the spoke there. Just don't try clean the faces with that type of brush. Now this is what these EZ brushes are absolutely fantastic for, fitting in behind calipers which are close to your wheel barrels. Look at that, effortlessly goes in. This little EZ brush just makes cleaning these back wheels just so much easier. The front ones, unfortunately, still doesn't fit. Now for the wheel faces, we're using a Valley Pro small wheel brush. Now I've sprayed more product onto that brush so we're, we're up to using bloody near, near enough 200 millilitres of product for one wheel and that's just outrageous, you, nobody can sustain that, particularly with the cost of the, the product. For the 500 millilitre bottle that we're using here it's £8.95, now there's no other options, they don't have 1 litres or 5 litres or 25 litre drums. You just have to go with what they've got. They're just a new company starting out and £8.95 for an, a wheel cleaner which you probably could dilute this but there's no dilutions recommended on the bottle so really we just have to go with it as a ready to use neat product. But one thing I've found in my own routine, it's not a fault of the product, but in my own routine I've kind of left wheel cleaners behind. I'm now into wheel shampoos and a bucket of water, wheel shampoo, wheel mitts. That does me just fine with the wheels that I've got and the ceramic coating that's on them. So using this product has really, it's taken quite a while, it's taken over an hour to go round four wheels here. Now yes I know I'm moving the camera around and making a review, but I just felt, you've maybe seen that as well, that by applying the product and then cleaning with the EZ brush and then going to do the wheel faces with another brush, it's all time. And time saving for me is a bucket of wheel shampoo and a wash mitt and really that's all I've used for the last year or so since I had these coated. This little brush that I'm using here on the calipers is really good, it's a really, like a toothbrush. Uh, you could use a toothbrush, um, this is a hog's hair version, you wouldn't use a hog's hair toothbrush for your own teeth, but hmm, you never know, you never know what people are into. Anyway, so we'll give it a rinse down and we'll see how the cleaner has performed. Now in the instructions on the bottle it tells you to agitate if required, which we have done, and it also tells you to reapply if necessary, and in this case You've seen the state of the befores and look at how clean the spokes and the barrels. Overall, bright, clean and shiny. It's removed 
all of the brake dust that was on the wheels, all of the brake dust in the barrels, all of the grime, the grit, everything that was on those wheels through lack of cleaning for the last few weeks, possibly a couple of months. So is it all too good to be true? We'll find out a little bit later on in the video. We're moving on to the front wheel now. Now don't worry, we're not going to do all four wheels. That'd be just a little bit too boring. With the front wheels, bigger brakes, more brake dust, more contamination on this wheel. So maybe more of a test for it. With this clean, we're going to change the brush slightly from the EZ Mini to the EZ Large, just to see if we can save some time really. So same again, I'll we'll grab the stubby gun and give it a good rinse down first just to remove any loose brake dust and contaminants on the wheel first before we add the chemical. No 50-50 this time, we've already seen the result of that, we're just going to get straight in with it. We're using about half as much product as we used on the back wheel and we're going to use the larger EZ brush just to get it right in there into the barrels. Now what I do with my routine is I clean the barrels first because that's like the dirtiest area of the wheels because as you can see there when you drag out the brush from it then all the, the dirt and grime sort of cascades down through the spokes. So if you're washing the wheel face first and then go in and do the barrels, by the time your brush comes back out you need to redo the, the faces again. So in my logic I do the barrels first, it's the dirtiest part of the wheel. Which is ironic because when we're cleaning a car, we clean from the top half down, which is the cleanest to the dirtiest. But with wheels, we seem to do the dirtiest to the cleanest. How odd. The grime that's managed to pull out those barrels is really something else, isn't it? Now, I don't know about you, but I'm really quite concerned about these brake discs. Now, the discs themselves have been coated with Built Humber Atom Mac well before I attempted to clean these. You spray the Atom Mac on, you let it dry, that's the best way to try and help prevent disc oxidisation, but these are extremely oxidised. So forget the fact that it's a great cleaner, I'm really worried about just how strong this is now, so I'm going to test to see whether it's an alkaline or an acidic cleaner. Now on the bottle it certainly has a corrosive symbol on it. So one little spray and you can see there it's not alkaline, it's within the acid range. We'll just see where it is. So I reckon it's probably somewhere around about the 3, so pH 3. So it's right about the same as like a vinegar or lemon juice, something like that. So therefore, yep, it's an acid based cleaner. So having a look at the safety information sheets and that confirms that the actual active ingredient on it is a mineral acid salt. Now that's nothing really particularly unusual. Most wheel cleaners will be some sort of salt based detergent anyway, but this one is an acid based, just happens to be what it is, that's its active ingredient. So it's not going to dissolve any of your wheels or leave your car sitting on stumps in the morning when you come in. It's just that I had a look at those brake discs and, and I'm not really prepared to put those discs through that type of chemical attack on every wash that I do. But if your wheels look like this, then you maybe want to have a wee word with yourself. But a bottle of Viricent wheel cleaner could turn these wheels into this. And I think that's where we are with it really. It's a fantastic cleaner for your grimy, horrible, neglected, covered in brake dust wheels. As a valeter for a business, you will certainly need this type of product. But as an enthusiast, you will need it, but just not use it that often. And finally, onto the glass cleaner, the cheapest of the bunch here at £6.95. The unique selling point of this product is that it's got a fresh blossom scent to it. I've never used a glass cleaner before that has a flowery scent to it. Just 
a quick demo of the product here. You can see from the trigger action it's delivered quite a bit of product to the glass and it seems to have a slightly foamy action to it as well. Now it's gone really streaky as you apply it but it's not a problem because what's happening is that as the, you work it in with a microfiber cloth then it's actually allowing the, the dirt and grease to bond onto the glass cleaner that you've applied and it's easily wiped away with a separate microfiber cloth. Can you just see that as the glass is brightening up there? It's really quite unique. Never used anything like that before and it works really well. I quite enjoyed using it once I got a bit of a technique going with it. And I let the wife try it on the house windows. Bonus, I got her to do a bit of work and she said she enjoyed using it as well. I'm using one of these glass cleaning tools here, that's the plastic sort of wand that you get with a microfiber pad on the end of it, just works in the glass. You would then have to remove the residue with a separate microfiber and Fluorescent actually recommends that you buff again with a, a dry side of the towel. So potentially you could have like a, a three cloth method for the glass, but it does work well and it does leave a nice streak free finish. It's just nice to work with a product that doesn't flash off too quickly because some glass cleaners if you spray them, wipe them and they flash off, they could be flashing off the surfactant and you're left with the grime still on, you could be at your windows for a long time. So working with this product it gives you that good working time, doesn't flash off too quickly and just works. So between the wheel cleaner, the shampoo and the glass cleaner from Varescent, I've really enjoyed using this trio. The products themselves really do feel quite high quality and it's very easy to forget that they're eco-friendly products. Sometimes being eco-friendly does compromise on the power of them, but not with this brand. You can only buy these products from Varescent's website, I'll put a link in the description below for you, but the trio of them can be bought for a special price of $19.99. That's excellent value for money, it's almost like buy two get one free. I love what the brand is all about, just completely ecological and environmentally friendly, even down to the cardboard boxes that come in. They're recyclable obviously within your local bin collections, even the tape that goes on it is, is able to be recycled down to these bottles that they use which do contain recycled plastic. And with that it brings us to the end of the video. I hope it's been of some help to you and if you were looking to try some of these products then I'll pop that link in the description below for you to check out too. I'm not affiliated with Verescent, the, the review has been of my own opinion based on my user experience with the products. So I'd like to thank Race for sending these up and I'd also like to thank Nick at Gillywash on Instagram for recommending me to do this video. As always if you've got any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And the music for today's video was provided by Stu Preston. I'll put a link in the description for his channel. Do please go and support him by subscribing to his music channel. Thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Till then, cheerio bye.